for walking freezer not reaching temp overnight um, this freezer has a lot of traffic in and out throughout the daytime so normally this walk-in freezer never reaches temp during the day one thing that I notice is this is a lot of product got a lot of boxes very little room for circulation all right so we up in the motor room let's just check out our rack all the compressors are running um, that one's running we got no oil uh, let's check out our liquid level all right so we're at zero percent kind of hard to see but there's no flashing going on that looks good our set point is six we're at seven um so we do got the capability to pull down um our condenser set point is 20 we're running at 226 um we got two condenser fan motors that should be running outside um down to one and uh, as you can see here is our bakery freezer um, circuit 43 that one's not reaching temperature overnight um, 45 is coming down so um, we got to figure out what's going on with um, freezer circuit 43 so all right so I got my gauge hooked up and um, basically I'm just confirming that my EPR valve is hundred percent open we should be reading the same pressure same saturation temperature see what we're reading 7 PSI, so our EPR valve right here, CDST valve is 100% open. So we know that that case, that walk-in freezer has the capability to come down to at least negative eight degrees. The coldest case here is ice cream. We normally keep it at about negative eight. Uh, the set point for that cooler is only zero degrees. So got an issue probably with the valve or a thumbs up with the case. Let's check our transducer. That's our transducer right there. Hooked up on my high side, 6.8. Let's just head over to our E2. As you can see, we're reading 7 PSI. So. All right, so let's log our uh, circuit. Let's just check out the graph. Everything was fine, as you can see here. We was running nice and good. And all of a sudden, we started having some sporadic changes. Something is causing these changes. Um, we need to go down to the case and um, check the valve. As you can see right here, look, that thing is not even coming down no more. So something is definitely happening. So far, it looks like it's been feeding. It's not a lot of frost buildup on the valve. Um, also, sometimes when you see frost buildup on the valve, um, doesn't always mean that there's a restriction. Um, anything below 32 degrees. Uh, moisture will freeze on the surface so um you're running at real cold temperatures in here probably negative in the negative negative 10 negative 15 somewhere in that range basically you will see frost sometimes right, so i got my thermocouple and now we're gonna hook that up basically these are pretty new my brand new test of 550s i decided to bring these out i got fifth piece but um have a lot of issues with it. Keep getting stuck at a negative. Um, so I just wanted to try something new. Pull out these new Testo 550s. I put these to use every day and um, I'll see how they treat me. All right, so I got my thermocouple hooked up in the back after the sensing bulb. Also, you wanna hook that up after the equalizing tube um, right here from the TXV. You always wanna be after that when you're hooking up your thermocouple. Um, Let's go ahead and um, close this door. Let's get the refrigeration on. This is a freezer, so I have the door off, the door open, so we got no refrigeration flow. Once I close that door right there, refrigeration will kick on. So I'm gonna put my temp sensor in the ice water and um, we should read 32 um, degrees. Also, I closed the door. Our refrigeration is now running. And uh, Let's see what we're reading on the gauge. So my soup heat is 88 degrees. That's pretty high. Uh, I don't really hear any refrigeration going. Um, I don't think my solenoid is energized. All right, so um, we're going to check out our liquid line solenoid right here. It don't seem to be getting energized. Um, our door switch is working. Our fans is cycling on and off. 
One thing that I never heard was this liquid line solenoid energized. Never heard it energized once. Also, as I'm pulling on this, this thing should be warm. You should feel like a magnetism, like a magnet. As I'm lifting this up, just confirm it. See, look at that. All right, so I got my meter out. I'm just gonna hit my NCV button. And uh, we are lighting up red. I don't know if you can see that, but it is glowing red. We are getting some voltage here. I don't know what's the voltage, but um, we need to confirm the voltage. Also check this solenoid coil. All right, so I got my wire nuts loose. Um, this is a MKC2 solenoid coil, dual voltage. Um, this is wired for 208 volts. Uh, if you just look right here, you can use this as like a reference. It comes, it's a cover for it. So you got 120 and then 208, 240 with the red and the yellow together like you see here. So that is set for 208, 240. Um, I'm gonna cut the power on and uh, I wanna make sure I'm getting 208s to my meter. And if we're getting 208s, nine times out of 10, this is bad. All right, so I just flipped the power. As you can see, we got 206 going to this MK2. MKC2 solenoid coil dual voltage, meaning this should be energized. All right, so I got my alligator leads hooked up to um, L1 and L2 on the solenoid coil, um, low, the low voltage wiring. And um, basically, I just wanted to check the continuity and see what it was reading. And um, let's just check it. Let's just turn our meter on. So, as you can see, this motor is OL. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, install our new one. I just brought a new one in. Um, before I power up the new one, we're gonna wire it up just the same way this is for 208 volts. And we're gonna check out our resistance, see how many ohms we are reading. So. All right, so as you can see, I got my nice new shiny MKC2 solenoid coil installed and I got my alligators hooked up again, my alligator clips. And here's our old MK2, MKC2 solenoid coil. Um, this is how you know it's a two because the size right here, um, the one is a little bit smaller. Um, also, you could check it out here. Uh, let's get a little closer, MKC2, 120, 208, 240, 60 hertz, 15 watts. This is a dual voltage solenoid coil. And basically it just energizes and uh, lifts up this little plunger in here and allows the Freon to flow through here and then through the TXV. So um, let's just check this new coil. Let's see if we get any ohms. Let's just check out our resistance. Good, one more, one more. All right, so as you see, we got 265 ohms on that. The one that was bad, we had zero OL. Our meter didn't even budge, so that's an indication that that coil is open. There's no so, continuous path. Got everything wired up, um, 208. Um, to test this out, you can use an amp probe. Um, just put your amp probe right over here. You will pick up some amp draw. I can't seem to find my amp probe for this meter. I got one out in the truck. But um, you can also use like a little thermostat screwdriver. Just put it onto here and it will stick like a magnet. Dan Falls has an app in the app store. Uh, it's a magnetic tool. It's a pretty cool tool to use also. So I'm gonna go ahead and energize this solenoid and I'm um, gonna see if it gets some action, see if it gets some feeding, some refrigeration flow. And uh, we're gonna go from there. I'm also still gonna check my sensor. I have it here in the ice water. Gonna have that check while I go up to the roof also. All right, so now I just kicked on the power. Um, this solenoid is energized, I can feel it. Also, I can hear the flow of Refreon. And if you look at this ice here, you see it's melting a little bit because we got refrigerant flow. All right, so as you can see, um, our refrigerant is now flowing before our pressures was reading negative four on the suction side and we are sitting at 7.4 our super heat is 55 degrees this box is pretty warm it's been out for over a day seem like uh, so we're gonna let this thing pull down we'll come back and check the uh, check the super heat also um, 
I'm gonna run up to the roof and check my sensor right quick, make sure it's reading 32 degrees. I can tell that this cooler's been off for a long time. You can look at the ice on the flesh, you can see it's a, it's a liquid. So I can tell that this cooler's been off for a long, long time. All right, so my temperature says in ice water, as you can see, we're reading 32 degrees. All right, so I put that temp sensor back and uh, we're back at the rack. And like I say, right here, we were starting to trend higher. And over the last couple of days, you can follow that trend. It has never really been that low. Uh, like I said, that cooler is a high traffic cooler. Uh, they are in the middle of production, it's a bakery. Uh, so everything gets done early in the morning. So, but the good thing is, as you can see, our temperature is now starting to drop. Now that we have refrigerator flow,